Hey, you came back for episode four. Thanks for joining us again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to check bearing clearance with plastic gauge. So, here we go. Okay, so what I have set up here is I've got half of the bearing um, put in place. I've got them clean. I've got uh, all of the rod journals on the crankshaft are clean. And so I'm gonna set the crankshaft in here dry and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spin it at all. I'm just gonna set it in, and then I'm gonna put a piece of plastic gauge on top of each uh, rod journal, and then I'll put the main bearing caps on with the other half of the bearing in it, like this, and then uh, torque it down, and then we'll we'll unbolt them, take them all off and then take a measurement of each of those pieces of plastic gauge to see how much bearing clearance we have to make sure that we have the right the right clearance. So that's that's what we're going to do here. Okay, you can see my piece of plastic gauge here. Just got laid on there. And then now I'll take the main bearing cap and put it on. And hopefully the piece stayed in place. All right, well, the plastic gauge is on. The bearing caps are on and the bolts are run down. We're gonna to torque them now to 80 foot-pounds and then uh, we'll loosen them up, take them off and take a measurement of the plastic gauge, see where we come out at. So, I'm gonna start in the middle and work your way out. Kind of alternate back and forth. Okay, so the all the bolts are loosened up. We're ready to pull them off and take a measurement of the plastic gauge. And to measure plastic gauge, then you use this. This is what the plastic gauge comes in, and then they have these um, measurements on the side. These each of these uh, sections represent um, a certain measurement. So. You see the larger, the three thousandths, is the smallest block because uh, the more that the plastic gauge is squished, the, is the tighter the clearance. So that's that's how these things work. So pull this off and so here is our is our clearance here and it looks like right about two, two thousands. So that's how we'll, and we'll measure that for, for all of them. Well, all of our bearing clearances fell between uh, two and three. Uh, some were a little closer to three, but we're still within the allowable limits. So I'm going to pull the crankshaft out and then uh, clean off the plastic gauge from the bearing caps, uh, that, that half of the bearing, and then we'll start getting everything lubricated um, and then get the crankshaft put back in and then do, do final torque. I'm pretty liberal with assembly lube. Kind of a, if some is good, more is better kind of a mentality. <laughs> Just 
be sure. And then for the thrust bearing, I gotta add some extra, so I, so I gotta wipe it on the sides, these, these sides of the thrust bearing. All right, now I've got the rear main seal in place. We are now ready to put the crankshaft back in. Okay. And then Turn this around. Okay, crankshaft's fully installed. Next we have the timing chain and gears. And then once the plastic gauge shows up in the mail, we can plastic gauge all the rod bearings, get the pistons in, and be even closer to getting this engine back in the Jeep. One thing that is a little bit weird about the four liter engine is that the timing is not set on the compression stroke like most engines it's when your timing marks are lined up it's on top dead center of the exhaust stroke so that can be a little bit confusing if you set it up and then you look at your camshaft and looking at the lobes you can tell that it is not on the compression stroke so when it's on the compression stroke, then this mark will be out here, and in this mark, this mark will be in the same spot. So this will just be 180 odd. So something a little weird. All right, I got the engine on its side right now. I just cleaned all of the cylinders with a blue towel and brake clean, and then I took some blue towel with. Uh, engine oil on it and then just wiped each cylinder uh, just to put a thin layer of oil on the cylinder walls. So now uh, we're going to get the pistons prepped so that they can go in next. Okay, we've got new pistons, the new rings, getting them all put together, getting ready to put them in the engine. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button for me. And if you're not subscribed already, be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you next time.